Amen. Let every heart say amen. Amen. We greet you this morning in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, the one who died for us, shed his blood on Calvary's cross, and as the song indicates, that's love. Amen. Didn't have to do it, but he did. And he did it willingly. Amen. The Bible says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things he suffered and being made perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation to all those who believe in him. Amen. He suffered for us. Amen. To think that he would come from glory down on the cross for ungrateful people. That's really love. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we greet you in the name of Jesus today to uh, this great church family, all these ministers and officers, to those who are worshiping with us from other churches, other places. If you're new to Conway and you're worshiping with us, we thank God for your coming. And we're just blessed to say to you that you're in the right place at the right time for the right message. And we pray you'll have the right response. Amen. There is a word today from the Gospel of John. Chapter 8, verses 21 and 24, the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 21 and 24, amen. All over the building, people are standing in reverence to God's word. There was a day when they found the word in the book of Nehemiah, and when they found the word and the minister began to read, the Bible says they all stood up. Amen. Amen. In reference to God's word. Reading from the King James Version of the Bible, verses 21 and 24, it reads, Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way. And ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sin. Whither I go, ye cannot come. I said therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sin. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sin. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. From this passage of Scripture, um, God has given us the genesis of a series of messages um, from the theme the tragedy of rejecting Jesus. The tragedy of rejecting Jesus. This is a serious theme. For the next six weeks or so, uh, 
uh, as we prepare our hearts for Resurrection Sunday. For the next six weeks or so, we're going to trace as much as we can some of the events uh, that covered the last six months of the life of Jesus as he begins this journey up to Jerusalem to die on a rugged cross for us. Along this way, we will see uh, events and situations that describe the tragedy of rejecting Jesus. As we're going to see, the more he taught, the more he healed, the more he ministered, the more he was rejected. Amen. It was a tragedy for the Jews, the nation he had selected and chosen. It was a tragedy for them to reject their Savior. Amen. Uh, and, and so we, we really have to start in John chapter 1 through 7, 1 through 6, maybe, to get a good foundation. So today, uh, we're going to look at some events, some doctrine in John chapter 1. As we land a foundation, we got six weeks, so we don't want to start in chapter 8. That would not be fair. Amen. Because there is a foundation that must be laid. Again, our theme for the next six weeks, the tragedy of rejecting Jesus. You may wonder what, what is a tragedy, and I know you know, uh, but a tragedy can be any event uh, that results in some major destruction, amen, uh, some distress, amen. Some suffering. Amen. Um, it could be any event, uh, like a crime, uh, some natural disaster, like a flood. But in that tragedy, there's always some loss. Amen. Uh, if it were a flood, there would be loss of homes and property. Uh, and businesses. If the Arkansas River should flood, the western part of Conway would probably get flooded. Uh, Walmart may go underwater out there. Amen. Somebody would lose a job because the business would close. It would be a tragedy if Conway flooded. Some people may lose their lives and their homes. There would be a lot of distress. It would be a great tragedy. But also our theme says that it's a tragedy to reject Jesus. And to reject simply means to refuse, uh, to accept someone or something. Uh, it can mean to refuse to believe in something or Someone. Amen. If you have been dating someone for two years and you, as a young man, buy the biggest ring you can find and get on your knees and propose to her and she says no, that's rejection. I'm just trying to be plain today. That would be awful. Amen. That pales in comparison to the tragedy of rejecting Jesus. It, it is a tragedy to reject Jesus. Amen. And so we, we have to go to chapter 1 to begin to see this idea of rejection and tragedy. But before we do, God inspired me to share with some, there may be someone here that doesn't quite believe yet, that we should look at Matthew chapter 10, 
for just a moment as we set the stage here for this message. We're talking about the tragedy of rejecting Jesus. Tragedy. Rejection. In Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28, this is important because the Jews, the religious leaders, love their position so well. They, they love their authority so much. They didn't want to change. And so in the process, they rejected Jesus. They were fearful of other people. And, and I've got news for someone today. Maybe a young man or a young woman is here. And you're a little fearful of what folk going to say if you come to Jesus. You need to look at Matthew chapter 10. Look at verse 28 real quick. This is a teaching message, so y'all hold on. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, do you see it? In the King James Version, Jesus says, and it's in red letters, and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul. But rather, fear him, that is Jesus, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Amen. You can fear a man all you want, and you can reject Jesus all you want, but Matthew chapter 10 describes a great tragedy. If you fear a man and you won't accept Jesus, you're going to spend your eternity in hell. And not only will your body burn, but your soul. I ought to get some help up in here. You, you can fear these folk all you want to. There's a greater one to fear. He's got the power to destroy your body and soul uh, in hell forever. I can't understand what it would be like to burn forever. I, I ain't going to get no help, y'all. But, but it goes on. If you look at verse 32, I'm still in chapter 10. We're building a foundation. In verse 32, the Bible says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. Verse 33. But, but whosoever shall deny me before me, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. What's the greatest tragedy? The greatest tragedy is for Jesus to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. He says, I'll confess before my Father which is in heaven that I, I don't. I'm going to deny you. The, the greatest gift you have is salvation. Can, can I get a witness? And it would be a tragedy for you to die and go to hell. Amen. So, so we start here. Amen. That's foundation. But we're not done. Because if you look at John chapter 1, you can begin to see why it's important not to reject Jesus. Amen. E even further evidence in the gospel of John chapter 1, Jesus is presented to us as the pre-existent Christ. This is not taught enough in the Baptist church. Jesus is is presented to us in John chapter 1 as the pre-existent Christ. Pre-existent means that he existed before he became Jesus in the flesh. In John chapter 1, the Bible says that in the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was, you got your Bible open, with God, and the Word was God. Can we study for a minute? There are two key words in verse 1. The first word is was, and the second word is word. 
Hallelujah, somebody. And, and was is an English word that was translated out of a Greek word that means existed. <laughs> uh, and the word word means Jesus. Can you put them two together? It simply means that Jesus existed. There's never been a time when Jesus did not exist. Can I get a witness? And then the Bible says, and the word Jesus, last part of verse 1, was God. The great revelation is that Jesus is God. And that he has always existed. That there's never been a time when Jesus did not exist. Here's a great revelation. It was Jesus, hear me clearly, who stepped out of eternity into time. I'm going to say that again. Jesus stepped out of eternity into time. Time that he created. He didn't need time because he was eternal. But he stepped out of eternity into time for us. Am I going to get some help? There's never been a time when Jesus did not exist because he was God and he existed in the beginning. When there was no earth, Jesus existed. When there were no fowl, no fish, no planets, he existed. I'm going to get some help in here after a while. Before there was anything, he existed. The Bible says that he stepped out on nothing and made something because the earth was dark and void. But because he's God all by himself, he can create anything that he chooses to create because he's God. And the book says without him, there was nothing made that was made. Because he is our great creator. And I had to skip to verse 10 because it got me a little concerned. Because it said he was in the world and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. This is the first instance of worldwide rejection of Jesus. Jesus made the world and the world didn't know who he was. So, so here's the first point. Look at verse 4. It says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. What I'm trying to say is, don't reject your creator. If you go back to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, the Bible says, and the Bible says, and let us make man in our image and our likeness. Well, who's talking? This was Jesus sitting up here with God saying, let us make man. Can I get a witness? What, what I stop by to tell you is that if you reject Jesus, you're rejecting your creator. If you're rejecting Jesus, you're rejecting the source of life. Paul told those folk in Athens, it's in him that we live and move and have our being. I stop by to tell somebody that's young and beautiful and handsome, you can't live by yourself. If God had not woke you up this morning, if he had not touched your body, you'd still be somewhere. I don't know where you would be, but you wouldn't be up in here because he is the source of life. He made life. He made us. He is God. He is everything. So when you reject Jesus, you're rejecting the source of life. Come on, somebody. That's point number one. Don't, don't reject the source of life. You need him every hour, every second, every moment of your life. Because he is life. Without him, we would die. When Jesus gets ready to take us home, he simply stops us from breathing. Because he's the source of life. Don't reject the source of life. Number two, look, look, look at verse 14. The Bible says, and the word was made flesh. I want to go slow because this is important. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. If you miss the first four verses, verse 14 ought to really help you out. That word that existed forever. 
took on flesh. Jesus is the only one I know who can exist forever and then make a decision to take on flesh. He didn't consult with us. He didn't ask our permission. He just decided on his own that he would become flesh. Can I get a witness? Can I take you back to Matthew chapter 1 where the Bible says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted means God with us. What am I trying to say? Verse 14 says, God became man to live with us. Y'all ain't going to get it. And he dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Which means the presence of God was in the earth through Jesus. Whenever Jesus showed up, God showed up. That, that, that's why people got healed because God showed up. I ain't going to get no help in here today. We beheld his glory. It means that he, he, he had the presence of God with him all the time. And then the Bible says he was full of grace and truth. Grace means he had favor. Everywhere Jesus showed up, favor showed up. I ain't going to get no. Ask the woman that had the issue of blood. She didn't have to do a whole lot but touch the hem of his garment and what happened? Favor. Hallelujah. Favor flowed down to her and she was healed in an instant. He was full of grace and truth. Jesus didn't tell lies. What, what am I trying to say? If, if you reject Jesus, you're rejecting the presence of God. You're rejecting the favor of God. Can I get a witness? And you're rejecting the only one that's going to tell you the truth. Don't reject this sinless example. See, verse 14 says he walked among us in flesh, but he never sinned. I'm reaching out to some young folk now. So many times we look for an example. There are no great examples in the earth. I'm done with that. I don't care who it is. I don't care who it is. Paul Moreau, Michael Jordan, whoever, you, you got your list. Don't look to man. This man in verse 14 is the only one who will dwell with you. He's the only example you can follow because he was sinless. He never sinned. He was perfect because he was God all by himself. When you reject Jesus, you're rejecting the best example that you'll ever see. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. And then you come to John the Baptist. And here's John the Baptist preaching repentance in the wilderness. Did you come to Sunday school this morning? And, and, and he was preaching a gospel of repentance. And people came out to see him because he was different. Can I get a witness? But he received a great revelation. In John chapter 1, verse 26, John answered those folk who kept asking him who he was. He said, I baptized with water. But there standeth one among you whom you know not. Mm. John said, he, he it is who coming after me is preferred before me whose shoes latch it. I'm not worthy to, to unloose. Can I get a witness? John didn't know who Jesus was, but God revealed to John the Baptist who Jesus was. And, and John realized that I was born about six months before Jesus. But, but I realized that although I'm older than he is, <laughs> he still was before me. Because he has always existed. He was there when I was conceived in my mother's womb. 
He's the one that opened my mother's womb because she was barren because he's God all by himself. And he can open up that which is barren because he's got all power in his hands and nothing is too hard for him. John realized I may be older than Jesus, but he has always existed because he stepped out of eternity into time to save me. Even though I'm John the Baptist, I need a savior. I need somebody that can baptize me with the power of the Holy Spirit because I can't make it. By myself, I need somebody that's got all power. Look, look at look at John, look at John. I like John the Baptist. John the Baptist was so humble and he kept baptizing. But the next day, I'm in verse 29. The next day, John sees Jesus coming unto him. And what did he say? The great revelation that you need to take away from this place today is the Lamb of God, the one who's always existed, took on flesh, came down through 42 generations, stopped off in Bethlehem of Judea, and when John the Baptist saw him, he called him the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. What am I trying to tell you? There was a lot of sacrifices that were done in the Old Testament. A lot of lambs lost their lives. A lot of goats lost their lives. But what they did was not enough because the blood that they shed didn't have the power to take away sin. But this man, Jesus, who stepped out of eternity into time was the only acceptable sacrifice for the sins of the world. And the Bible says he took away the sin of the world. I don't care how bad you are. When you accept Jesus, he will cancel all of your sins. If you've been sinning all of your life, this man Jesus will wash away all of your sins. No matter how bad you were, he's able He's able to take away all of your sin. So, so what is this Bible saying? Don't reject your Savior. Don't reject the Lamb of God. We don't need any more sacrifices. He died. He died. He died just for me. Shed his blood just for me. Hung his head in the locks of his shoulder just for me. He said on that cross, it is finished. It's over. Sin is defeated. Satan is defeated. The grave is defeated. Hell is defeated. All power is in my hands. I'm able to do anything but fail. Have you tried him? I tried him for myself. He never, he never, he never failed me yet. Bread in a starving land. Water when I'm thirsty. A doctor when I need healing. He is my everything. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, my everything. Yes, he is. My everything. Have you tried him? I tried him for myself. When I was 12 years old, I came to Jesus just like I was, weary, wounded, and sad. I found in him a resting place. He has made me glad. I've been rising. I've been falling. But I've got victory in Jesus. Yes, I do. 
Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glory to your name, Father. 